Eva Morellis was laid to rest today, the second of the two teachers killed by the gunman. Tomorrow, Lexi Rubio's funeral, the student whose parents testified this week to Congress. We've been in contact with DPS every day. And now more than two weeks after the massacre, embattled Uvalde School District Police Chief Pete Arandondo is defending his response, agreeing to a phone interview with the Texas Tribune where he said, the only thing that was important to me at this time was to save as many teachers and children as possible. But then there is this. He never considered himself the incident commander of the shooting response. One of the first officers to arrive at the school, the police chief says he raced into the school hallway, found the gunman barricaded inside a locked classroom, a door they could not break down. Decided he was going to stay in that hallway for the duration of the event until they were going to find some way to get into that classroom. But that he purposely left his police radio behind to keep his hands free for his gun and to keep the hallway silent, not to draw the gunman's attention. The police experts that we spoke with were critical of that decision. Not having the radios deprived him of the opportunity to communicate with other officers from other agencies to get a big picture view. Like the fact that students like Mia Cerillo were still alive and calling 911 for help on her dead teacher's cell phone. The chief says he's cooperating with all investigations, says he is proud they helped save more than 500 children, but that still he's receiving death threats. Those are people who just don't know the whole story that are making their assumptions on what they're hearing or reading. That's been difficult, he said. Difficult days in Uvalde that are far from over. In Dallas, I'm Kevin Reese.